is Raquel Gillan and I am originally from Brazil and I am so excited to be here. I feel such a so privileged to be able to speak right after Hope. I am such a fan and I the words really touch my heart. Um, I have some, some pictures to show here um, for you guys, but one thing that I have in common, I think with many of you here, is church planting. Um, I am a Seventh-day Adventist, but growing up, I was a faithful Catholic, and in my house, all we talked all the time was church planting. Because my parents' purpose in life was to move from neighborhood to neighborhood, and everywhere they went, they would start a new Catholic church. Um, this, uh, this last church that I remember, and was the one that I was mostly involved, um, it started in, a, in our living room, and then it moved to the garage, and then this was the first building um, that they were able to build back in Brazil. We had a few people there, um, and then later on, Later on, uh, they were able to put the, the walls up, and here are uh, me and my brother David, and this is really was our lives. We, we would talk about planting churches and how to reach people in that neighborhood um, for God, and we would spend a lot of our time doing that, doing some physical work, uh, work to build the church. And this is me, and we had a big group of youth and we are celebrating um, um, here. It's a special mass. And here are my dear parents, my dad and my mom. This is my youngest brother. And it will, we were doing a celebration to celebrate freedom. Um, and this is that church today. It's about 8,000 members. And when I go there, they still give me an opportunity to do a prayer or um, uh, some youth uh, preaching. I'm, they, they still invite me to come in um, every time I go and I visit Brazil. But my life changed when I came to America. I really thought that I was going to come to America to learn English because that was my desire. I really wanted to go meet other cultures, but I did not know what God had in His heart for me. When I first arrived in 2001, I decided to make a completely change in my life and I decided to speak English only. I lived with an American family, I only ate American food, but after a while, I felt that need to go back to my own culture. And I met a sweet, sweet couple, Mercedes and Jesse. And, and they said, hey Raquel, and we were introduced at school, and they said, hey, don't you want to come over to my house for um, some rice and beans. And if you are familiar with the Brazilian culture, rice and beans is everything. And I had not had a rice and beans for a while, and they got me by my stomach. And I said, yes, and I said, when can I come over to your house? And they said, well, we have food there, and we gather there every Saturday. And I said, go to work Saturday? They said, well, we actually worship Saturday uh, on the Sabbath, and we celebrate with friends in the afternoon as well. As long as I can come and eat some rice and beans, I'll be happy. I'll tell you what, they offered me a friendship with no strings attached. And then I said, well, uh, that's nice. I'll go over to your house. But I'm really not interested in going to church. And they brought me to this church that they were attending. It was a big Brazilian church. And remember, I was used to building and starting a church. So I felt overwhelmed by a big church, and I said, oh, you know, I'll come to your house, I'll eat those rice and beans, but I'm not really interested in coming to church. Until, but our friendship continued the same until that one day, a church was starting to be planned, and they were there involved in church plans. And they said, hey, Raquel, I remember you talk so much about planting church. We're going to plant churches. Why don't you come and you're part of the planting church with us? Because, well, let me make it clear to you, I belong to another denomination. So how is that that we're going to partner up to do something? So we'll just step over. We're going to have potluck, and you know, you can help it here and there. You can help with the children ministry or translate. And I went. 
The first day we had our famous Brazilian potluck, which we still had at our church. And of course, rice, beans, and lots and lots of friends. Immediately, I got engaged with a nice young group, and he said, hey, Raquel, what if we study the Bible together? I said, you know, I've been reading the Bible my whole life. My parents do worship in the morning. Why do you think I should start, you know, studying the Bible now with you? You know, it's for fun. It's for you to learn more. And Leticia said, Raquel, we can partner and we can study the Bible together. And that was an eye-opening for me. Because when we started reading the Bible and we started learning, I, my eyes opened to something I had never seen in my life. And of course, I called my mom and I said, as soon as I tell her what I saw in the Bible, she's going to change. I said, hey, mom, do you know it would be better if we pray to Jesus directly than asking for Mary? And then the next day, mom, do you know maybe if we keep the Ten Commandments, shouldn't we stop working on the Sabbath and take that day uh, as a sacred day? My mom said, you have been brainwashed. I have raised you with all my love for so many years. Now you go to America and you get brainwashed by a cult. This is not happening in my house. You better come back to Brazil right away. But at the same time, I was going into, uh, I would say, an identity crisis because all my and all I believe and the love for Jesus that I had is still very meaningful to me. But now the Bible is revealing things that were so eye-opening. So my mom had the greatest strategy. She said, since you've been brainwashed, let me help you a little bit. I'm going to send Deja to the United States to help you out. Because this is, you know, you just need some more family support. So they came to live with me. We at the time lived with an American family, and I would go to the Saturday worship every Saturday. And my brother said, hey, Raquel, let me tell you something. Stop with that laziness. We are going to have to work together. If we're going to be living together. We're going to work every day of the week. So we start cleaning houses. And I said, well, that's fine. But, you know, really, cleaning houses Saturday or Sunday, people might not like that. So why don't we make our schedule during the week only? And he said, fine, fine, but we're just if we don't have clients, because I don't want to be brainwashed just like you. I said, well, that's okay. I said, then why don't you come to church with me Saturday? He's like, well, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm 100% sure that when I get there, they're going to say bad things about my church, and I don't want to be offended. I said, I will guarantee they're not going to mention our church. They're not going to say anything about our church. So, of course, I was praying that nobody would mention anything <laughs> about the church. And here he comes. This is their, his first Sabbath at the Advent Church. Just remember, this is the first time he's a Sabbath into a Protestant church. And, of course, it was a public day. So, it's a lot easier to make, to make that connection, to be friends with the other ones when you're in a more in, uh, relaxed environment. And even better if you're eating rice and beans. And so that's what happened. If you see here, this is our first deacon, and this is our treasure. And look, they full of good intentions. Here is my no strings attached friendship towards you. My brother liked it so much that the pastor said, hey, David, I know that you play the guitar. Why don't you come next Saturday and play the guitar uh, with us? He said, well, let me make something clear to you. I belong to another denomination. And I only know songs that I learned from there. He said, that's fine. You know a, a song about the song or something? He said, oh, yeah. Okay, so why don't you come next Saturday and you play? Here's David next Saturday. He comes in and he plays. And they invited him to immediately be part of something. I was translating. He was playing with the worship team. And that was our lives. Immediately, he got part of the sound system. And he had to go every Saturday. And guess what? He had to adjust the mic for that preaching. And meanwhile, God was doing a work in his heart. Praise because God. he was there every Saturday. And he was working for the Adventist message even before he had converted and publicly said yes. 
I want to be a Seventh-day Adventist. We had a small group, and we decided that this was so much fun because we had so much work to do that we invited Fred and Elton to come along. Again, they had really no religious background, but they, they didn't have anything fun to do on a weekend. And they didn't have a car, so we drove them to church. So here we are, not church, and we invited somebody else to come to church. And you're like, but you're part of this church. So, no, we're not, but it's okay. You can come. There's some work for you to do. And um, so you guys know about this family. They got baptized, and they have brought to Jesus more than six people of their family to Jesus. Now they live across from one of the biggest universities, Adventist universities in Brazil, Naspi, and they work in Pathfinders, Adventures, and they promote um, couples ministry there. All right. The biggest part of our lives was sharing Jesus through small groups. And then in my heart, it took me, guys, it took me Sometimes we rush people in into making a decision, and very soon here, you will be called to make a decision for Christ. I don't know, I don't know where you are in your life, but for me, it took a year and two months to make a decision for baptism. But finally, I decided. I said, I am going to get baptized, and it's going to be awesome. But I decided not to tell my parents, because I knew they would have a heart attack. At that time, I had one brother left in Brazil. He decided not to talk to me anymore because I was now a traitor of my family. My neighbors started telling my parents what's going on. We have heard a rumor that your daughter and now your son going to a different denomination. It's very shameful to my parents who helped build that church. I just decided I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to get baptized and that's it. The church decided to do 40 days of prayer, you know, towards that event. My brother, David, who had started doing the Bible study as well, so we had been together, we've been together around seven months then, he became very quiet when I said that I wanted to get baptized. He wouldn't say anything. We stopped arguing about the Sabbath or the Sunday. He was just very quiet. So then on the Wednesday, before my baptism, we're driving back from school together, and David says, hey Raquel, can we just stop the car on the side of the road? I want to talk to you about something. I said, well, now he's going to say it. Now he's going to say, I already told the mom and dad, this is such a shame, this is such a disappointment. And he said those words, do you know what you're going to be doing this Saturday? He said, well, I'm getting baptized. He said, you are breaking with the tradition of our family. We have no one in our family who has stepped out into a different faith. I said, I know, I know. He said, well, you know, our parents are going to be completely disappointed in you. I said, well, I know, and I'm a pleaser. I'm the oldest one. I like to please my parents. And he said, well, and then he started crying. I said, well, now he's going to be disappointed in me. He said, well, I have decided on something. Our parents have taught us everything that they know is true. But now it's time for us to make a decision for ourselves. And he said, I have decided I'm going to, to talk to the pastor. And if it is okay, I want to get baptized with you this Sabbath. So the following Sabbath, we got baptized together. And of course, you know, I ask people not to take a lot of pictures, not to put it online because I did not tell my parents. So a couple of Saturdays after that, I had a conversation with my dad, and my dad said, you know, I kind of knew that, I was sensing that, but if God is calling you to grow in a personal relationship with him, you know, what am I going to do? I said, well, dad, I'm, I just want to let you know that I'm very happy, um, you know, with this new faith that I have found. Of course, we had a potluck to celebrate. And then I met the love of my life in church. And this is our boys. Of course, they're a lot older now, but this is the picture that they're still. And I could, you know, photograph them, and I wanted to share that picture. But I want to say something to you. It's hard to be a young adult looking for the right person for you to marry. And I'll tell you, God is the best, the best one to make those arrangements for you. And I found my husband 
in church and he wasn't that good of a Brazilian church. He was there and actually he happened to be the treasurer of that church. And we started on a beautiful friendship and we got married. Great. So then I had to ask my parents to come for the wedding. And I said, hey dad, would you walk me down the aisle? So it was the very first time my parents ever stepped into a Protestant church was to give me a wedding. Of course, he was not happy. He was thinking it was going to be completely different. But my parents have seen the behavior of my husband who never asked them to change anything. But they got very interested in it. And I said, Dad, wouldn't it be nice if Sam, our youngest brother, would come and live with me? They said, no, no. Let me tell you something. I love you. This is kind of works out for you. But that's my last Catholic child. I'm not going to give that up. But you know, God is wonderful. I said, Dad, I promise you, I am not going to be giving him a Bible study. But if he comes, you know, it's hard to send him to the public systems. So it would be a good idea to send him to an Adventist Academy. You know, there are cool people, and I think that would be a great idea. So my dad thought it was good. So here's Sam. He went to the North Dallas Adventist Academy. And his first week there, they invited him to play the drums. And he invited him to play soccer. And all of a sudden, here is Sam doing the bike. This is the boy who did not speak with me for almost a year after I got baptized. It happened that he met Leanne. And they are now uh, expecting their first baby. They've been, they've been married for three years. And then Sam started questioning my parents and said, you know, have you read on the Bible about the Ten Commandments? And I can We have heard this before, but with you it's different. You are 16, you have no opinion of yourself, you are a minor, and we prohibit to you from getting baptized. If you ever get baptized before the age of 18, you just know the commandments also say to honor your parents who are going to be dishonoring us. It was very hard hard for Sam. He even got sick after making a decision for Christ because he was feeling he was going to betray our family. He got hooked up right away in choir. He started singing, here's David, this is me. Immediately they got him to do something related to sound system or playing. And then in May of 2009, he got his high school diploma from North Dallas Adventist Academy. Only a few months after that, he gave his life to Christ and he got baptized. You know, again, we did not tell our parents. And since this day, we have not confirmed if the Sam has been baptized or not. But this year, the church is actually um, has proposed his name to be uh, the youth elder of the church. These are my brothers today. And this is our this is our lives. They are Sam and, and David. They work with the Pathfinder teams and they bring other kids to Christ and other people that didn't know the gospel before. This is Sam preaching at our church, and here is David, he's very proud of our youngest brother. And here are my parents. My brother is given a, a, a Pathfinder Bible book preparation. My dad said, you know, I'm going to go and learn some more about this. And my parents spend usually four to five months here in America with us, and every time he comes, he does not miss one Sabbath. He wants to work in everything that the church is doing. He always says, you know, I'm from another religion, but I can help. And I can be part of it. But as he's doing things, something is changing in his heart. He's no longer praying for the intercession of saints or Mary. He is looking into the food he is eating. He has decided to keep a day uh, of worship. And here's my mom. And the last time that they were here, we didn't have people to cook for um, Pathfinder camp. And my mom said, yes, of course I can serve, I can go and I can help. So then they were there, this is my dad cooking, and here's my mom, this is me. It was below 
uh, you know, freezing point. And here are the kids. Our pathfinders, that's my mom and my dad. And you know, these kids, they look up to my parents and you know, it's, for me, it's so touching. I'll tell you, when I finish with this quote, there are people all around us looking and praying for God to send someone to teach them the truth. I was one of that person. And you guys opened up this church for me. You opened up for my brothers. And you gave us something to do right away. You gave us no strings attached friendship. You fed us in your potluck. And because we saw the love of Jesus in your actions, we want to be part of it. Thank you. If you want to if you wanna reach out, just know that there are people out there like me, seeking and searching. Thank you so much for your ministry.